Hi, JP Fournier of The Movie Jerks here, coming to you on day 12 of Action April, the month where I watch a new action film that I've never seen every day for the full month. And for people who've written to me, uh, yes, I am doing these daily, uh, and I am doing them randomly. So we never know what film I'm going to get next. So let's find out which film I'm getting now. Uh, yesterday we had The Big Noise, The Light, and today we got Beckman. Hmm. Oh, wait a second. That guy looks familiar. David A.R. White. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, looks like a Christian film. Well, let's see what we have. A Mission of Vengeance. A contract killer becomes the reverend of an L.A. church until a cult leader and his minions kidnap his daughter. Blinded by vengeance, he cuts a bloody path across the city and the only thing that can stop him is his newfound faith. Yep, a faith film. That's uh, going to be bloody. Uh, my curiosity has been piqued. I'm game. Uh, day 12, I'm watching Beckman. What is commonly referred to as the Christian John Wick, Beckman is a combination of John Wick with a hint of Taken. Beckman is to John Wick just as Christian rock is to rock and roll. It's fine. This film does take its time setting up its premise and getting into the action. But in the second half, when it builds up momentum and gets its rhythm, it surprised me how much fun it turned out to be. Especially being that it's a poor man's version of a John Wick wannabe. And I will admit, this is the most violent Christian movie I have ever seen. Well, I guess besides movies with Jesus. That being said, the film does suffer from some poor script writing, as I found it difficult to understand the motivation behind Beckman's boss, called The Network. Beckman. Good evening, Mr. Beckman. Are you prepared to fulfill your debt to The Network? as the rules upon how they work are never really clear. But if I see your name on the bows again, Mr. Beckman, you will have no mercy. Nor is Beckman's relationship to them ever really established, allowing us to understand the gravity of the situations if he is with them or against them. And at this point, I think I should probably put a spoiler alert here, as I need to bring up the ending. Now, I cannot say for sure if the ending was a cause of some producer's notes, some bad script writing, or perhaps just a misunderstanding of the level of intelligence of their aimed audience. But the film follows Beckman as he brutally murders anyone who gets in his way of his goal of seeking revenge for his daughter by killing the cult leader who's responsible. Yet after multiple slashings, shootings, and murders Reverend causing an increasing headcount of bodies in his wake he suddenly has a change of heart and doesn't follow through with his final kill why um i guess because of god I, hmm. This change of direction completely goes against all the character development that we had witnessed prior to this moment. Raise your hand. Kurt. Whoa. Ah. Whoa. 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 Don't run. Don't shout. Sit down. His character arc has fallen deeper and deeper into emotional darkness, solidifying his goal Orphans, addicts, homeless. Now we only sell to the best select clients. Millionaires, billionaires. We did these girls a favor! So when he doesn't follow through, the change of mind not only feels disappointing, but insincere. It also doesn't make any sense as a lesson in this film. So you can kill 20 to 30 people leading up to the last final kill, but if you let that last person live, then you can save your soul? So obviously this ending didn't work for me, but can an ending ruin a whole film? 
Yes, in this case, it certainly did. And there you have it, day 12 of Action April. This time I watched Beckman. What other Christian action films do you think that we should watch? Let us know in the comment section. And if you're curious about other films I'm watching this month, be sure to hit the subscribe button to get updates daily. And for more information about The Movie Jerks, go to www.themoviejerks.ca.